let's have a quick conversation around package design because we're gonna be adding packages now to the project and I'd rather have some of this information um, already embedded in your head as we go. Back in the year 2000, Brian Kernahan was, a, was, was asked this question. I'm gonna paraphrase everything, but it's essentially the, the question that he was asked. What do you think is one of the biggest shortcomings of the C programming language? It's an interesting question, isn't it? What do you think is one of the biggest shortcomings of the C programming language? He was asked this question in the year 2000, 10 years before the even mention of Go by Rob Pike and Rob Griesemer and Ken Thompson, and they all know Brian Kernahan, right? So you can imagine that they all have the same sort of answer to this question. Brian said, paraphrasing the following, I believe the biggest shortcoming of the C programming language is that it doesn't create enough mechanisms to create firewalls between the different parts of your program. It's not that you can't simulate object-oriented programming. You could simulate it, but the language in the compiler is not helping. Like, think about it. Packaging in Go is the answer, is the answer to that question. What packaging does is it creates those firewalls between the different parts of your program and the language and the compiler are enforcing that. This is why it's so hard in Go when you come from C, C Sharp, Java, PHP, to wrap your head around this because up until that, up until the point of Go, your code base has essentially been a single monolithic code base. You've used folders as a way of trying to maintain mental models of code a way of organizing code, but it all built into a single sort of binary. In Go, we don't have that. Your compiler first takes every single folder, treats it as a static library, and builds out an individual static library for each folder. Each package truly represents a static library that is firewalled against each other. And then it takes all of those libraries and builds your final binary. Now look, we could have been building software like this for a long time. Ruby has gems, Java has jar files. In C and C Sharp, we have, D, we have static libraries, DLLs. We could have been building software like this. The tooling is there, but it wasn't enforced, so we didn't do it. And so the first thing I want you to realize and think about is that in Go, we're not building monolithic code bases. We're building essentially APIs. We think now in terms of APIs that provide some functionality that eventually come together to solve the big business problem. You gotta have this mindset now in place when we start thinking about this. And now that lends itself to some other conversations. The first one is we want packages that provide, not contain. What does that mean? You want a package or an API that's providing something very, very specific to what it is that you need. So packages like HTTP, NET, IO, JSON. If I asked you what those packages provide, you'd be able to tell me without any issues. We know what they provide. When I say provide, it doesn't mean it has to have a small surface area. It just means that it has to be really obvious why you would want to look at that package to begin with. But when you have packages that contain, you can get into a lot of trouble. What are packages that contain? Utils, common, helpers. And if you have a package named this today in your project, I'm telling you, your project is doomed to fail. Models, you must not, you cannot have a package of types that are essentially shared across other packages. You cannot do this. This will create a situation where you cannot make code changes at some point because it will break too much stuff. 
I call it flipping the pyramid. If you think of a pyramid that is upside down, that models package is what every other package in the system is sitting on top of. Eventually you try to touch it, the entire pyramid collapses. We've seen it happen. You gotta stop thinking about a project as a monolithic code base and start thinking about a project as a set of bricks in that pyramid. And we've gotta keep the pyramid from flipping. We need layers and we need a minimal amount of import dependency between these, these packages. Now, if I'm telling you to not have a common package of types, then what should you do? Let's have the conversation about a type system, because I think this one's important as well. A type system is, actually, let me step back for a second. Let me step back for a second. Let me share this with you. I want you to think about any line of code you've ever written in your life. Any line of code in any programming language, I don't care what the language is, I don't care what the line of code is. I want you to think about one line of code. I want you to realize that a line of code can only do one of three things. It can either allocate some memory, read that memory, or write to that memory. This is all that your code can do. Allocate, read, and write. And if you want to take it to the next level, that allocation, that read and that write, is purely a numeric operation. Whether it's an integer or floating point, it's a numeric operation. This is what our code does at its basic level. It just allocates, reads, and writes numbers. And yet we're on a Zoom, we're doing things with our phone, the world is blinking, all because of that. When we talk about integrity at a code level, what we're trying to say is that we have to make sure that every single read and write is accurate, consistent, and efficient. That's kind of, that's what we really mean, we're talking about efficiency. 